And I didn't seek work any time in career as an actor. In these two places, there is nothing called the human will. It's all God's will. They expect me to do more theatrical than natural. What kind of dreams and aspirations does a little boy growing up in the cocooned existence of a mutt have? There were no aspirations or anything of the kind at that time. You know, I grew up in the mutt and then ashram, and uh, just. Uh, one went with the flow, and uh, as in the ashram, some I was, I learned some bhajans and stotras and uh, guru stuti, etc. When my father shifted from there to the mat, uh, I mean earlier was I, that's about the uh, first six years of my life. Thereafter, it was in the mat till about twelve, and that was all about. Uh, I was I was going to school, but uh, right from morning till evening it was all about, say, Ganapati Atharva Shirsha, Rudra, the, the Mantra Pushpanjali, Ashtavedana, and then Bhagavad Gita. And so. so one just studied, I mean, but one, but one act, it was rather compulsory, you know. And uh, at that time to do was to do well in school. I was doing that. Was this outside the curriculum or was this the curriculum? No, this was outside the curriculum. I mean, they, on the domestic uh, front as well. Because um, my parents were in the Anand Ashram for the first uh, six years of my life. They were there since earlier, before I was born. But thereafter, in the mutt, you know, because my father was in the services of the mutt, you know, as manager and secretary to the Swamiji. You know. And all of our travel was mostly limited to from the mutt to the ashram, ashram to the mutt. The slight dichotomy, I see that you say that you did watch films during this time. How did no, this happen? That was yeah, purely, that was not the phase. That we just, I did see some films, a film, say, old film like Ratnagiri Ras in an hour. And uh, where we were in Shirali from there, Bhatkar was with it. Was by. So one saw films like Janak Janak Pail Vaji. Vai. Uh, v. Shantaram and some, some Marathi films, uh, Amar Bhupali and things like that. But that was far and few between. And it was only after I went to Bombay that I got into watching some films. Then, uh, you know, my I was in the Kannada, studying Kannada medium here. There it became English medium and I fell behind in studies. <laughs> when, you, when you think of somebody with a Konkani background, you see a father who thinks that his son will either join Kenra Bank or Syndicate Yeah, Bank. my father had dreams of my being an either, preferably by an engineer, then doctor, then perhaps something else. <laughs> this was the most, mostly engineer, my father wanted me to be an engineer. But uh, when I went to Bombay, it was the languages and the mathematics, that was all I was good in. Other, other subjects and all, I, I scored poorly. And I had to repeat 10th. That's when I said, when well, I know all this, and I was rather because my classmates had gone ahead and I was sitting with these uh, boys who were uh, at least one year junior to me. And, and um, my uncle at that time used to work in Bombay in Metro. My uncle worked in the Westrex company. You know, they, they made projectors. And, no. So I used to meet, meet him there once a month or twice a month. Then I saw that that, that theater was there and he did take us, the, the, his family and all. We went to English films and at that time only English films were in Metro. So in my second tenth, I started uh, sleeping out of school because it was all repetitious. And so he used to go sleep into the theater, standing or somewhere at the back and uh, watch films after films. The show after show. But at that time, there were no aspirations of any kind. But do you see this as some sort of a design by destiny that you, you know, you started? Yes, because when one grows up in uh, these circumstances, one learns to deeply believe in destiny. And especially in these two places, there is nothing, nothing called the human will. It's, it's all God's will. So, laterally, I, I mean, in that, at that point of time, I, there was no, even then at that time, also I had no aspiration. 
It was only when I was about 19. And so my <laughs> years in Mumbai from the age of 12 to 18, 19 were quite miserable. Mm -hmm. And I was totally uh, felt out of place and I, I thought I was not equipped you know, kind of uh, deal with Mumbai and its life and their lifestyle. When I was suddenly asked, would you act in a play? It was a three act play on the life of, uh, you know, the Lord, uh, he's called Gauranga. He's the saint poet of that time in Bengal. And it was, the play was in Konkani. And it had a bit of, you know, in a singing, you know, a bit of dancing while singing, and then a lot of dialogue. You know. So, at first I hesitated. Then if, and another elder in, where we lived in the colony called Talmakiwadi in Mumbai and all, he used to he said, come, can you come and participate in some radio play earlier? So that time around, when I was, say, 15, 16, I had participated in some All India radio plays. So that background was there. And then my, so and by then I, had, I knew that I, there was no field where I could, when I was school, I was not. Uh, counting to be much. But your father was disappointed, I guess. Very, very, very disappointed. He never forgave you for a long, long time. <laughs> for, you know, that too, from with that kind of a background, when we come into it, is taboo, drama, cinema, and all that, totally. So, yeah, there was kind of a what will, what will this boy do, and what, if at all he'll do anything. But with that play, you know, I've started loving the, the rehearsals, particularly because those. So two hours, three hours daily, my, I could move out of my personal miserable life and <laughs> get into some other role and uh, so that's how I took to it. But again, initially you played these characters that were, you know, monks and… Uh, Correct, yeah. I played initially this, uh, this Gaurang, you know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then Gautama Buddha, so that was also. Then another play about… Uh, uh, all these were directed by Venkatra Talgiri, who acted in Vamsha Ruksha here. Yeah. So then uh, that, the third was about rebirth. Uh, he is born, he dies early, he is born again. He remembers the past and uh, that kind of play. Now, before I moved into social film with the dramas with uh, R.D. Kamath and K.K. Suvarna. And then I met uh, Amol Palekar came to stay now. Something. I met Amol. And he, under him, I participated in some Marathi plays. He took me on to Satyadeva Dubai with whom I did some Hindi, you know, very modern plays. It is he who took me to Shamsham. So you strayed into cinema? Yeah. Strayed, absolutely. Yeah. And people used to say, why didn't you, you couldn't do anything, why didn't you, now that you have shown uh, some kind of prowess in uh, acting, why didn't you j join NSD or FTII? I, I didn't even know what to do. That such things like that existed, like NSD or not that I could afford to. You call yourself an untrained actor. Yeah. But this stage wasn't it training enough for you to, you know? Yeah, that's in the sense, in the, to begin with, I was not trained. But I had seen right from the young days uh, our Yakshayana in the South Canada, North Canada. They are very popular there. And then uh, Bailata and things. And one used to, another. The happenings that happen, like you know, the uh, dance forms or the Huli Vesha. Right. The, we have the Pesta, the festival, Christmas festivals in Udupi, and the Huli Vesha are very famous. I do them at home or <laughs> like that, but nothing, no training as such. But this gave the training. If you were a youngster today, you could call yourself an untrained actor because you have two left feet, you don't like action. Uh, I don't think anybody would have, you know, said that you are good enough to be a film hero, except for your looks. Or oh, perhaps. I agree. <laughs> I agree. And in fact, I, that's what I said. In fact, that is the only thing I thought that I may be good at by the, by the time I was 19, 20. And then uh, play after play with experience and with the newer, like uh, comedies especially, R.D. Kamath was. And from the Konkani to Canada, to Hindi theatre and all that, they were very modern places, which is uh, Dubai, 
especially the you know, staged. And people with him were like Amrish Puri and uh, Amol Palek uh, and Badal Sarkar and uh, Vijay Tendulkar. And, uh, I think there was a vibrant theatre movement. Yeah. Uh, in that time. Mumbai, it's very much on Marathi, Hindi, Gujarati, Punjabi. Yeah. All in, and Kannada theatre is also very much on Marathi. And the transition to films was also comfortable because Shams films didn't hurt your sensibilities. They were uh, very correct. And here also, you know, the, my first film was in Canada only. It was uh, YNK, GVIR, and uh, Girish Karnad, who and the, this trio who brought me into my first film in Canada, which was then again a new, new wave kind of film in that time. And I played a rationalist in that. With Sham on the trot, I did some six films, and then with uh, Satyu also. So. That set the kind of uh, firm footing for You uh, did Shams films, then you did probably Bailudari was your first sort of social. Uh... Uh, yes, in the sense, I did a film earlier than that. When I was doing Hamsagite, I was called to do a role in uh, Devra Kandu also. But that, that was my first commercial film. But there was a song in it. And uh, would you play some instrument? He said, I can play the tabla. <laughs> so I played the tabla. You know. And the sang. So that was the first. But with uh, Bailudari, it, uh, it was totally commercial. And, uh, Ironically, you found uh, acting in films like uh, Bailudari theatrical. You know, that was what they expected. But I was rather you know, very firm that I, by then, by then, you know, the number of films I had seen in English, particularly in you know, Metro, you know, films of some mythological, some historical, you know, even socials you know, like, like Ben Hur, so Beckett, and then social films, and then Marlon Brando, or Peter O'Toole, and uh, Richard Burton, and those kind of films. You know. So I saw the difference in the, our Indian films or Hindi films. And then the, the, so I, I thought that is the correct way. You know. So they expect me to do, to do some more theatrical than uh, natural. So I just couldn't do it because in theatre also used to do. When I was, they used to tell me to you must on theatre on stage you must overdo a little and you know, the, the older generation. But with Amol or with uh, Satyadev the or not. So they said, just be natural. Just be yourself. That kind of thing. Project your wife. And he said, Dubey particularly trained me physically, voice wise. And he said, no mics. Just, we would be the staging place for, say, 100, 150 audience. And you have to project your voice. There are no mics. No kind of a system. So all that combination. Did help in the long run. You did a lot of films with uh, Sham on the yeah, rock. Yeah. It looked like you know he cast you first and then thought of others. Uh, <laughs> nah, uh, no, it, it snapped so. after Kalyug. Uh, was it because you were living out of suitcases? Did you think you should move to Bangalore? Or? Oh no! By then, actually, in '79, so I had moved to Bangalore. Mm -hmm. I uh, was accepted. Other films came, like after Bhojanudari, particularly other kind of films, other directors and at that time most of the uh, films were dependent, uh, based on uh, uh, novels, some stories. And they, they had a very powerful storyline and content was very good. In contrast, I didn't get very good uh, in the parallel, parallel good roles in the commercial setup in Mumbai. A couple of films did come but then somehow they, they just started halfway and then just stop. I did spend some uh, 100 days for two films in Mumbai, going and coming, going and coming and at the end of it all, uh, again there is another half of it left. So they, then I told them, I said, you, anyway you are shooting in bungalows and all this, why don't you come to Bangalore and shoot there? I cannot come and stay here 15 days at a time. You always rated uh, Kondura as one of your finest performances. Yes, Kondura. But uh, your regret was that many people could not see the film. It wasn't released uh, for a long time. Commercial film public came. These films were, you know, made differently, and then the themes were uh, differently handled, and, and as such, very intellectual 
and some of the, that's the thing. This is, you know, the, such films are hardly seen by about ten percent of the people, and therein lies the rub. You know, that's how before the middle cinema as such came. You know, that either in this extreme or that extreme, and those films did some of them did very well, but not all, not all would do, and then you couldn't make a career out of it in the sense that you could hardly depend on. Uh, the income they give you in uh, those films, and they would be one in one and a half year. This would be about three, four in a year. One of your earliest films, uh, Rajnikanth, was your antagonist. Do you, do you have yeah, any know. memories of that? I mean, do, yeah, I one know. of those guys who says, "Okay, I saw a spark in him" or something like that. Is that? Uh, I mean, do you remember? No, he was. Uh, he was also upcoming at that, time. and he had acted in. Uh, some some films here as villain and all, but he had found he found better uh, opportunities in Tamil Nadu in Chennai, and he was doing that and this also. And so I was, at that time it was that I was cast in Mathu Tappa the Maga, and he played the villain in that. By then he had done some films where he was the leading man there. Also. You were never in the rat race in the sense that is that a very comfortable place where people expect you to perform well. And just leave it at that. Not uh, thinking of the film as a whole and the box office. Uh... You know, so I did start getting a lot of films. There was a year I did thirteen films. So that kind of work was here. At the same time, I found that my I'm getting so I'm getting known in Karnataka. My attitude to the success of film, most of all, I always chose very good stories on the roles. There had some change in them. I didn't like to repeat my film, and every time there was by that by then uh, people who thought in, in the cinema that here is a youngster who can do any role if you write it for him, and then there came writers or directors and who made different roles for me, uh, and then I would say yes to those roles, and then I would uh, uh, so my attitude to them was that. Mahapaleshu Kathachana was my attitude. In the sense, that was which I had uh, ingrown in, in my childhood. I did my work, I did it honestly, and I waited for it. And then I, once it is a hit, if the film is a success, then I knew the more work would come automatically. And then that's how it happened. I didn't seek work any time in, in my career as an actor or amateur actor, then a professional. I waited for. Well, It to come to me, the opportunity to come to me. So, and I was, uh, I knew a while. You, you know, if you have a good subject, if a good role, you feel in your bones that somewhere this film will, you know, click. You know, not even if not in a big way, at some in some way. So that would bring and so that attitude stood me again in good stead, because it stopped me from from taking I say saying no also. And it made me unafraid to, you know, there are at those times so there, there was famous production houses and all. They wouldn't pay you well. In fact, their payments were uncertain. They promised one thing, and then uh, uh, you know the payments were not forthcoming. I would say no to them straight away. You also slipped away from the sets because of that. Yes, because they would promise it. The money would. They said then tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. And by then it's a profession. It is by a profession unless. So others in the like if if you insist on payment, they will not call you. And I was had no, I didn't care. I had no problem with that kind. I said no. If they don't come, somebody else will come. Kind of an attitude. The same time to the success of the film, I had this, you know, approach that uh, God willing it will succeed. I find it very strange that at that point of time you didn't work with Putana Kanagar. Is it? Uh, I mean, were there any feelers? Uh, Did you not agree with this kind of films, or because he also made films based on Kadambaris? Yes, but at that time he was uh, he was already a big star, and in the beginning he had his set of actors, and he preferred to work with newer people. I did meet him. We did talk. I did work with Arthi in those seven eight films. She also said that you should be acting in with him in one of our films. But uh, when once she. Approached me for it. I could not. We, I might had given dates to some somewhere else, and then just. And by the time that was towards the end of his life, almost uh, 
there were especially two journalist friends who were very close to him. They came to me and then they brought about the subject. I said, fine, let's do it. And, but then he was no more so very soon. But it just, that, that didn't happen. Other than doing films based on Kadambaris, which was in vogue in those days, you had a few films that probably were after your heart, like say, Baladingala Bale. Yeah. yeah. Uh, very, very interesting uh, film. But they're few and far between. Or how often did you? Yeah, they are few and far between. Because uh, not all, it's not easy to, you know, you these you write a script. You write a script and then to bring it on, you know, on screen as you have written it here. It's sometimes very difficult to execute. You know, it's like planning a massive building. You know. But when you bring it on and you build the edifice, then there may be, you know, a lot of slip between the cup and the lip kind of a thing. And, it may not turn out to be so. It's, that happens with you know, so because there is no rule, luckily and fortunately or unfortunately. There is no formula for the success of a film to be pre presented aesthetically. You know. So people do mean well, they try, but it does some, all the time it doesn't happen. So I better think about it once in a while. He has done good work earlier also, but of late he has not. Even with say Yoga Bhatt, you know. But there were consistent, like with, uh, say, uh, Bhagwan, Dore Bhagwan. I had worked with him some eight films, all were successful. I would work with K.V. Jairam, again eight films, all were successful. But not all can do that. One or two flash in the pan are there, but generally there's no rule. At the same time, there is no yardstick. And uh, they like a lot of people in Alliance. If people had gone and seen the film and then said bad things about it, I would be fine with it. I can take it. Just, but people just refuse to come to see my film when they say, you feel, oh, my God. that's happened. That also happens. But it's very rare that uh, a film like, say, Godi Vanna or something, Hemant, he worked so hard on the script and he's an engineer who gave up his uh, profession, came here and did this film. And I, when I saw the film, uh, script, I read it and I told him, oh, this is just out of magnificent this is. If only he can translate it on the screen. And he did that. What did you Last four months in the Nimtande condition is just serious. I think just before that, there were a few films that. There were a few films, the same, yes. There were two, three other films also which I was doing, and they were all youngsters. And in fact, they come and uh, sometimes argue. You have backed him, you have supported him. Now, I'm also a youngster. Why you should support me? What do you mean? How you can't say no to me and everything? So I said, okay, come, let's do. And then you do, and then somewhere, you know, I may not be there in the hardly now, say in a Godi Varna film. I was there for 10, 12 days. Rest of the time, when I'm not there, I don't know what they are doing. But similarly in other films. But in Godi Varna, he did it. In other films, when you are not there, you don't know what they have done, and then when you see it, oh God, <laughs> what has he done? So, that, so that's again very subjective. You seem to be enjoying your work because you have the freedom to refuse a Vishwarupam because the weather will be too cold in New York, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not because you don't want to do the film, but... Uh, yeah, that was because when we went uh, ourselves our, on our own with my family, my wife and our, I found that I couldn't withstand that kind of a cold. That has been just a, I mean, uh, dire winter there with snowing and all. I, I become disoriented. I had water coming through my nose, eyes, uh, and I, I don't even step out. People go and play, play in the snow and all. I, I'm just not, uh, so, so I had to turn it down. This is your uh, 50th year as an actor, including your five years in the stage. Have you figured out what acting is? Is it reacting? Is it impersonating? Is it mimicking? Uh, reacting is very important. You know, but that is seldom done here, that technique. So, in a sense, suppose we two are talking. When you are talking, the camera moves on me and I react. Right? And when I am talking after a sentence, then the other nine sentences are on you. You know, <laughs> there have the reactions uh, become. But then now, different kind of people are taking different uh, types. But I, reaction is important. At the same time, action also. It has to be a heartfelt. There's no cheating, especially in a close-up. 
you have to feel you have to personalize that particular room that mood and uh, now in fact as you said earlier now it's not i had kind of a, a very philosophical attitude to the success or failure of a film but after i started doing supporting role now i am i keep track of i hope what is the reaction of people you know such a film this film this role and things like that so it is uh, mimicking can be there but uh, mimicking is a also but it, it doesn't stand you in good stead all the time and caricaturing also to up to a point but i do things up i do discuss with my wife say this role has come shall i mimic some of that that person's you know kind of this person and ultimately if the director also agrees then you can do that it's easier i know that you are a good mimic <laughs> <laughs> because in my life when i did malgudi days and i had to do uh, a young man and the father also especially the father of the vendor of sweets and all. i was wondering who to look at and, and then i settled on my father only who used to always wear khadi and uh, dhoti and uh, khadi and uh, topi and all so i started uh, imitating him and uh, immediately after a couple of short shankar knew are you imitating baba he asked I said yes. I find find it easier if this role and all, but uh, caricaturing, mimicking, all is shallow. But there are some roles where you have to that nothing is of help. You have to totally immerse yourself, and your personality should go at least ninety. Anything between ninety to ninety nine percent, you should not be that. Uh, you know, I should not be there in that role. You should see that person, and that that part, that role. If you have studied it, uh, think about it. what we call in uh, in indian sir manana chintana madidare then it's it's it starts teaching you to do this do this and all you know, and then your whole body language your delivery dialogue everything becomes different so that's also very enjoyable so so you you seen the evolution of kannada cinema cinema in general in india you seen various faces various directors uh there was a sort of a drought of uh, directorial talent in kannada yeah. but you seem to be excited now about this new crop that is coming yes uh, uh, that is exposed to uh, world cinema yes. they have a mind of their own yes they have do you uh, see hope for kannada cinema i mean yes especially since uh, you know from the late 90s it started and there was a drought period as i said but thereafter a lot, lot of youngsters uh, and i asked them for a script Uh, before and at least for on the one hand i need it on the other hand if he has not done that way and if he is just doing taken notes and he wants to do it that will also help him and some of the scripts i find very good but my role may not be good in it but i go through the whole lot and i tell them your script is good my i, I can't do this i'm not suited to do that role or something but your script is good because it's it's so fresh you know there, there is some fresh thinking which is happening fresh imagination and they see something in if not in this state some other state or some other country and they do come up with uh, good scripts now so i'm very good some are, some even in fact i have got a script now which is totally abstract and that boy that he wants to do it and but i i cannot i can't uh, participate in that project and with this uh, development of this uh, the social media uh, media you know there you know, a lot of picturing pictures come and they all see it and then from that they learn and then they compose their shots also that way so there is a lot of fresh water coming in and they are conscious of it that in tamil they are doing that in malayalam they are doing that in hindi they are doing that and we should do something in you know, that kind of a uh, you know, enthusiasm has come in our youngsters and that's, that's very positive as always it's been a pleasure uh, talking to you thank you if you like this interview please subscribe to film companion <laughs>